We thank God for another time, another day, another afternoon that we can be found in his presence. My name is Beatrice Waithaka, and this afternoon I'm born again. The joy of the Lord is my strength. For our visitors, I'm a member of this church. I serve here, and I work here in the name of Jesus. We want to hear the word of the Lord because I believe that's where we came. If we wanted to hear news, we to watch TV. But we came here for one purpose, to hear from the Lord. And we're going to read from the book of Acts 16, verse, verse number 25. Acts, the book of Acts 16, and verse number 25. The Bible says, Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were hearing. Let's give thanks. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the breath of life of this day. We know our Father. We were many last night, but some never saw the light of this day. And therefore, we are here as a remnant of this day, King of all the glory, because you have not finished with us to your Father. We know that you are work in progress, and that's why you brought us to this house called by your name to your Father, where there is an exchange of over God of what you have been doing, what we'll do tomorrow. Therefore, we commit ourselves to you, to your Father, in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for every individual who came through that door to your Father, because I believe we not live the same. Speak to us, to your Father, in a language you can understand. Speak to us, circumstances to your Father. Our our conditions to your father, our environment give on all glory because we know that in you, to your father, we have our whole being. I send myself to you, Jehovah Father. Speak to me through your people, to your people, Jehovah God, as a vessel in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't have my own words to your father, they lie on you and the spirit that you left for us, King of all the glory, that you speak through me to your Lord, O oh God and our Father, for the lives of your children. We send out this service to you because you know you never gather your people in vain. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to honor the leadership of this church, our bishop, our mom, Pastor Alice, for giving me an opportunity to stand upon this altar to speak the oracles of God. And I want to thank God for you who came. You chose to fellowship with us this afternoon and this day. We thank God for the 14th day of March, 2021. This afternoon, by the masses of God, I want to share on a topic, the prayer of praise and worship. That is the title of my message this afternoon, the prayer of praise and worship. And we have read from the book of Acts 16 and verse number 25. If you read before the other verses before, Paul and Silas were caught and beaten persecuted, just as what is happening to other believers in the, in the times that you are living. And because these people, they had not sinned, the only thing that you are, they were accused of is that they are bringing another doctrine <clears throat> and try to change what the Romans believed. But one thing that stood out is that these people were righteous people. They only spoke the word of God and tried to change the lives of people that were living in that era. And when they were brought to the magistrate, they were stricken they, are, they, were, they, they were left naked and they were beaten and finally put in prison. Not only prison, but in a prison. <clears throat> and that's where we are getting our, our, uh, our verse this afternoon. Miracles can come out of painful places. I know, friends, nobody wants to go through a painful, play, a painful thing. But remember Paul and Cyrus. What came, came out of them is because they agreed to align themselves with the word of God. And the best example is our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember what he went through. Jesus was not a sinner. But he went through all that stuff so that me and you can know that this journey it is not easy. Though this journey of faith, nobody has gone before us and come and told us what entails in this journey. But remember this, that we have hope. Because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. Paul and Cyrus didn't sing praises to one another, but they sang praises to God. In the era that we are living now, we sing praises to our politicians. We exalt them. We appreciate them and every sort of our word. But remember this. What made a miracle to happen for the life of Paul and Silas? Because they sang praises to the almighty God. The Bible says in the book of Acts 13 and verse number 2. 
that one day, as these men were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint or separate for me. One day, as these men were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. Remember this. These people were worshipping. These people were not in business. These people were worshipping. And the Spirit of the Lord said, separate or dedicate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work of the kingdom. We have read about Acts, in Acts 16.25, about two people. This is Paul and Silas. Remember this. This is what you call united prayer. These people had one mind. They had, they had one spirit. They, need, they knew one God and they had one faith. So that when they prayed together and sang together, the Lord had from heaven and a miracle took place. Paul and Silas could not have been singing some of the praise songs that are used in some churches today. Because some of the, of the songs Christians sing today don't praise or magnify God. And you know those songs. If it was for some reason to sharing this message, anajua hizo manyimbo, mimi sizijuagi. Unajua singine zinembo, sijui. Uwa natuimbia kwa ofisi, but I cannot remember them. But she knows very well. There's nowhere our God is glorified. And if those songs were the ones who were sung in, during that night, believe you me, Paul and Silas could not have been, the, the jail could not have been open. But they glorified, they had only one focus. No matter what they are going through, they knew one thing, that our God is in it. Too many times, the song we sing are more of a complaint than they are of praise. What kind of a song do you sing? Are you complaining or are you praising the Lord? Many of us, many of them indicate, poor old me. Those are the songs and the praises that we sing. Poor old me. Attitude. Some of them talk about us wandering through the, the life destitute and downtrodden, walking the dark wall of life. There's no praise in our prayers. There's no praise. When the Lord listens to us, it's just complaints. Just thank God for life. Yes, you don't have what it takes, but you have life. Remember last year, we are talking about one year now, since corona hit our country. How many people have passed on? People with the money, people with the names. But the Lord made sure that you become a remnant so that you can praise him. But in your heart, in your mouth, there is no praise. You're only complaining. My prayer is, as you pray, learn to praise the Lord. Pray and praise even when we do song about heaven, we sing about how good it is going to be when we get there. When we get there. But you know, we practice heaven here on earth. In heaven, it will be continuous. But we practice heaven here on earth. Do you praise the Lord? In your prayer, is there anything that God can pick and say, for real, this girl, this boy is praising me. What do you praise? Are we together? The midnight hour can also refer to the midnight hour in our lives. Midnight could also be symbolic of times of seeming darkness or tests or trials in our lives. I don't know where you are this afternoon. I don't know the far that Corona has brought you. Are you in the midnight hour? Or you are just about or leaving the midnight hour. But I believe something good happens during the midnight hour. But thank God we have a resource of power that's available in us to withstand the weapons of the enemy. Remember, as even if you are born again, we still have an enemy. We used to sing a song when Bishop reminded us yesterday in the G12. Atiniriokoka nisipate tabu. You became the, the target of the enemy. Mwanzo, ukukua target, na ukukua. Sasa ndi umepata shida. Sasa hivi. And the beauty is, you have somebody to walk with you. Because Jesus went through it. And he promised he never leave you and not forsake you. We have God's word and we can pray. You have God's word. That's another weapon and we can pray. Many times just to pray is not enough. Notice Paul and Silas prayed and then they sing praises to God. 
Can you be able to sing a praise at midnight hour? Can you be able to sing a praise in what you are going through now? Because the Lord has had your prayers. Now he's waiting for you to praise him because of what he has done. Anyone can pray when he finds himself in trouble. Anyone, even a thief. Even a thief. But it takes a person of faith to sing praises. Two in the midnight hour of life. That midnight, when everybody is asleep, it takes a man of faith to sing praises to God. When Paul and Cyrus sang praises to God, their backs were still in the same condition as before. Remember this. We are talking about the midnight hour. We don't know what had happened during the day. This is midnight. These people were in pain, total pain. Their backs were hurting. Their wounds were still bleeding. But they afford one thing to pray. They never lost their focus. Friends, when we go through stuff in life, we forget we are born again. When we go through stuff in life, we start complaining. When we go through stuff in life, even our testimony, it is watered down. But I'm here to encourage you, as I encourage myself this afternoon, that these people were still hurting. In a prison was not a, a, a hospital that they were being attended to. But remember this, nobody gave them medication. Nobody gave them, gave them painkillers. Nobody gave them antibiotics that those would be septic. No. Just the way they were during the day. The way they were beaten. They were put the, in the inner, not even prison, the inner prison. I don't think we have inner prison in Kenya. We only have maximum prison, like Kamiti and Kingongo and the rest. But this one is inner prison. They were put inside with the way they were bleeding. And I believe that some of them were, maybe they were naked, depending on what you have read. But they were put in the inner prison just because of one thing, the gospel. But they knew one thing. We are going to turn this persecution. We are going to turn whatever we are going through and make it something good before the Lord. And they knew this, that our God, when we praise him, is going to make a way for us. And for sure, before morning, the Lord had already made a way for them. Buenasifiwe. Their feet were still in stalks. A stalk is a heavy timber. It's a heavy timber frame with holes where feet of an offender could be locked. Imagine a timber. Imetengenezo tu kwa sababu ya mwenye mwenye offender. You know, these people are not, they are not sinners. But before the magistrate, there were offenders. They put their feet in that, in that, in, in that, in those holes and they were locked, and they were still in the inner prison, and it was still midnight. These people are suffering even torture, psychologically and even physically, but because of one thing, the gospel. The situation was bad, and it had not changed. They had no manifestation of help or deliverance at all when they began singing praises to God. We can see some light at the end of the tunnel. These people had no hope. They had come to their end. That where we are now, just about us and God, we are in your hands. Just may your will be done. Jesus, Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, that not my will, but your will be done. Where Paul and Cyrus were, they said, it is not about us, it is about the Lord. Whatever they were going through, they knew it is a worthy cost, what they were going through. I want to notice something. In the same verse, Acts 16, 25, that they prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard. Paul and Silas, they sang and the prisoners heard. Friends, do people know you are born again? I'm going to say, Maga, mimi ni miokoka ile, you don't testify. Mimi ni miokoka ile ya roho. You know, you ya ushuda ya roho. But Paul and Silas were not quiet about praising God. If they hadn't sing out their praises, then the prisoners could not have heard. But they heard. And these people, remember, they were in pain. But they sing praises to the Lord. In other words, Paul and Silas didn't pray quietly. And I was, I was, this was, was, what was coming to my mind. I think they prayed, they prayed in tongues. Because this was the era of the tongues. They prayed even in tongues. They sang. And the prisoners could hear that these people are not asleep. These people are not dead. Because they are left for dead. But they sang and praised the Lord. Some people say they want to pray quietly before the Lord. Before, because the Lord knows what they want. Friends, if Paul and Silas didn't praise 
with a loud voice. Even the Lord could not have heard. But the Lord knew, I'm going to pass you through this so that I can hear if you can still praise me in the open. In the book of Matthew 12, 34, Matthew 12, 34, the Bible says, Matthew 12, 34, You brood of snakes, how could evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. What was in Paul's and Silas' heart? It was praise and prayer. What is in your heart? When you are hardly praised, what comes out of you? Somebody said this, that when you put tea bag in hot water, it becomes nini? Eh? Are we together? What do you get? Strungi, yes. <laughs> yes, you don't get tea. You get strungi. Tea, there must be milk. <laughs> As Amelie said, yes, you get strong. So if a song is in your heart, it is going to come out. Do you have a song in your heart? No wonder some people's prayers never shake anything. Their prayers did not only move them into faith to believe God, but something happened when they prayed and praised the Lord. Friends, I don't know where you are this afternoon. You have prayed. But the Lord is saying, I want you to praise me. And a friend of mine, who happens to be a mother, one day she was in a very hard situation. And you know how we normally ask God, where are you in all this? In her, when she was praying, the Lord told her, things have not gotten worse. They will be worse than what you are seeing now. But when they are worse than what you are seeing now, that you have not even some food to put on the table for your children, praise me. Can you be able to praise the Lord when the children are crying for hunger and there's nothing you can put on the table? The Lord told her, at that moment, praise me. Friends, we don't only praise God when things are good. Even in that hospital bed, even when you are mourning, you've been bereaved. The Lord says, I need praise because I am the source of life. When I was severe. If Paul and Silas could be like most people in similar circumstances, they would have been gripping and complaining. And this verse, the one that we have read, could read like this. Now listen. At midnight, Paul and Silas gripped and complained. Silas said to Paul, Paul said, yes, Silas. Cyrus asked, are you still there? Paul responded, where else could I be? Cyrus said, I tell you my poor back is hurting me so bad. I don't understand why God let this happen to us. He knows we have tried to serve him and do our best. That is what could have been written if it was in our time. But remember this, there was no conversation regarding of what they were going through. It was only one thing, that they prayed and praised the Lord. Complaining was not their portion. If they had been like, like, like many Christians, Cyrus would have said, I tell you, Paul, I have never been put to jail, even when I was serving the devil. But now I'm serving the Lord, I've been put in jail. No wonder we ask God, God, can't you see? Imagine God can see. God, can't you hear? God can hear. But he wants you to go through it, the refiner's fire, so that you will be gold. You'll be, the, the final product will be gold. I believe you can learn something from Paul and Silas if we pay attention. They had been cast into inner prison. It was a dark picture. But someone once said, Paul and Cyrus were in jail, but they didn't let the jail get in them. Yes, they were in jail. And somebody also said that you can get somebody from Geshagi to Nairobi, but you cannot get Geshagi from inside that person. Are we together? Yes, you can get me from Geshagi, but you cannot get the Geshagi from me out. So I'm still with it. So Paul and Silas never allowed the jail to get in them. 
I believe this is the reason many people are defeated. They let circumstance overcome them. Instead of overcoming the circumstance, don't be swallowed by the circumstance. Rather, swallow the circumstance. Are we together? Who swallowed the, 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 the other one? Is it the sheep or Jonah? Who swallowed the other? Hmm? Jonah. Jonah swallowed the sheep. Or Jonah swallowed the fish. We swallowed the other. Which swallowed the other? The fish. Oh, not Jonah. So, so. After all, the tests and trials of life come to everyone. Not you. To everyone. There are some trials that are peculiar to us as individual beings living in the world. We all can't go through. Because as long as you're in this world, and Jesus said that we're in this world but not of this world, therefore we go through all trials and all tests. Basically, the tests and trials we face are all the same. But it is the attitude we have during times of tests and trials that makes all the difference. The attitude that we have when we go through the trials and the test. The attitude. My attitude, your attitude. That is the difference. How we look at a situation makes all the difference in the world. As to how we come out of the test or trial or whatever we come out of it all. How you face the situation makes all the difference. We can do as Paul and Silas did in the midnight hour of our lives when the storms of life come. And we don't understand why things have happened as they have when we've been trying to do our best. And that's, that, that is human being. Whatever we go through, one thing we ask is, why me? Why me? But when you are blessed, you don't ask the Lord, why me? Or anybody here who asks the Lord, why, should you, why have you blessed me so much? Do you ask that question? No. But when you go through trials, you are very quick to ask, why me? When you are in pain, why me? When you are bereaved, why me? When you don't have anything to give your children, you ask, why me? But when you are blessed, you don't ask the Lord, why me? This is life, friends. And you go through tests and trials. We can look at three truths concerning Paul and Cyrus, and then we'll be done. Truth number one, Paul and Cyrus prayed together. They prayed together because they knew we are in this thing together. And our, the outcome and our victory just come if we are united. So they prayed together. In the book of Psalms 119 verse 79, Psalms 119 in verse 79. The Bible says, Let me be united with all who fear you. With those who know your laws. Who are your friends? Whom do you hang out with? David said, Let me be united with all who fear you. With those who know your laws. There is no way you can get victory. If you are going this way, the other, your friend is going this way. You must be united. United with a purpose. Pray to God to support them. And these people prayed to God. Paul and Cyrus prayed to God to support them and comfort them in their afflictions. And because all of them were in pain, their prayer was one. Oh Lord, remember us. Oh Lord, get us from this. Oh God, come and heal us. And also they asked the Lord to visit them as he did to Joseph in the prison. And this we find in the book of Genesis 39 and verse number 21. Genesis 39 and verse 21, the Bible says, But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Can you imagine getting favor from the prison? And those people are so brutal. Have you gone to visit somebody in the prison? But the Lord made Joseph to have favor before the prison warden in the prison. Paul and Cyrus prayed that the Lord to be with them. And they prayed that their love and commitment in Christ might abound. 
When you are in trials, you are in temptations, you are in persecution, one thing they knew, it is very easy to deny Jesus Christ. But they said that our prayer is one, that our love for you may abound. Their prayer and praise was not only heard by God, but by other prisoners. This was not an hour of prayer. Am I right? It was not an hour of prayer. But at midnight. It was not a house of prayer. It was the inner prison, but in a dungeon. Yet it was seized, yet it was a seasonable time to pray. And the prayer was acceptable. Friends, for us to mount up this year, there are so many things we are going to shed so that we can be able to grow wings. Maybe you've been praying all through. The Lord is saying, I've heard your prayer. Now can you praise me? Praise me for what? Because of, not because of what I've done, but because of who I am in your life. Life alone, friends. You can never buy life. And you know you can go to any hospital in, the, in this nation. Go to ICU. These people are fighting their lives through the machines. And yet we are here. We are breathing. We are in. We are breathing out without any cost. Think about it. If today in the evening you have brought a bill, that since morning you woke up, up to this hour, this is what you have consumed. 5,000 or 10,000. What will happen? But the Lord is so gracious. He needs praise from, yes, he has had our prayers. Now he needs praise from our hearts. Number two, they sang praises to God. They sang praises to God. The perspective on praise. Paul and Cyrus were able to praise God because he never changes. Not because of what they were going through. They knew this was the same God who was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is the same God who was with Daniel in the den of Lion. This was the same God who walked through the children of Israel in the Red Sea. So they praised God because of one thing. He changes not. And how does it just this afternoon? That no matter what you are going through, no matter what you will go through, because life, you are either in a storm, coming out of one, or ready to enter into one. That is the life of a Christian. Christian life is all about storms. Today you are laughing, today, tomorrow you cry. That is the life of a Christian. These people knew that the same God who did yesterday is able to do for us today. And I want us to encourage us this afternoon that our God changes not. I might change because I'm a human being, but our God never changes. If God is worthy praising during good times, he's also worthy praising during bad times. If God is worthy praising during good times, he's worthy praising, praising sorry, during bad times. They praised God. For we, must, for we must in everything give thanks. Whatever we are going through, the Lord desires thanksgiving. We must give thanks. They praise God that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. How many times have you been denied a favor because you are born again? How many times those are in business have you been denied a contract because you refuse to bribe? These people counted favor. They counted so privileged that they can be counted, they can be counted worthy to suffer shame because of the gospel. That tender didn't go through because you refused to bribe. That contract was breached because you refused to bribe. Counted joy because you are found worthy to stand because of the gospel. Banais was As our rule is that the afflicted should pray. They prayed and the merry should sing psalms. This is from the book of James 5, verse number 13. James 5, 13. The Bible says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. I know of you, are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you suffering hardships? And I know there are some in this auditorium this afternoon that they are suffering hardship. You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should, you should sing praises. Buana Yesu 
And finally, number three. Instead of complaining and calling on God to judge their enemies, the two men prayed and praised God. Judgment belongs to God. Instead of complaining and calling on God to judge their enemies, the two men prayed and praised God. You could have called fire from heaven to come and consume everybody. But these people knew one thing. How will they know unless they are told? Who will tell them unless we go? Who will tell them unless they see what we are going through? That this is because of the gospel. And as I told you earlier, Jesus set an example for us. Jesus was not a sinner, but he went through because of me and you. The same case applies to Paul and Silas. They had not sinned, but they went through all this so that me and you can know that this is a journey and we can pray the price. When you are in pain, the midnight, midnight hour is not the easiest tune for a sacred concert, but God gives songs at night. For those who are mothers here, you know, at midnight, when you have an well baby, those hours are very long. Midnight hour. Even those who come to Kesha before the COVID-19 came, we knew at midnight, Masai Songagi, Unaomba, Unakutu member five minutes. Unaomba, Unafiri, it is three, Unakuta, it is only 12.15. Midnight hour is very tricky. But God gives a song at midnight. Job said in Job 35, verse number 10. Job 35 and verse number 10. Yet they don't ask, where is, your God? Where is, where is God my creator? The one who gives songs in the night. God is known to give songs when? To give songs when? In the night. David said in Psalms 42 and verse number 8. Psalms 42 and verse number 8. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. Each day David knew one secret, that you praise him during the day and at night he gives you a song. Charles Pajon said this, that any fool can sing in the day. Any fool can sing in the day. It is easy to sing when we can read the notes by daylight. But the psalm singer is he who can sing when there's not a ray of light to read by. Songs in the night come only from God. They are not in the power of man. Songs at night, they only come from the Lord. And you know, and it is very long. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Psalm 30 verse number 5, that weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Friends, that night may be a week. That night may be months. That night may be years. But the beauty is, joy comes in the morning. And there's no morning without a night. Therefore, you must go through the night for you to see a morning. Are we together? Wanasifiwe? Tuko. The children of Israel were demanded for a song in the book of Psalms 137. And we all know this song. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Here we wept when we remember Zion. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Here we wept. When we remember Zion, but the weakest. 
But the weak has carried away captivity, requiring for us a song. How can we sing the lost song in a strange land? They requested for a song. But they are looking where they are, they're in captivity. But they requested a song. Our tormentors insisted, insisted for, a, for a joyful hymn. Sing unto us one of those songs of Jerusalem. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord in a pagan land? Friends, it is only God who can give you a song. Especially in the night. Middle song can only be given by God. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, as I wind up. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but you are not crushed. I want to assure you this afternoon, no matter what you are going through, you will not be crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Please don't despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. That is the last thing God will do to abandon us. And finally, we get knocked down, but you are not destroyed. Yes, you'll be knocked down, but you'll not be destroyed. Romans 8.28 Romans 8.28 And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. We know that all things work together. Even what we are going through now is for a purpose. And God has allowed it to happen to us. This verse, Romans 8.28, we read it, we recite, and memorize, but we don't believe it. Because now what is in our heart, it's complaining. Why me? Why this? Why that? But the Lord is saying that all things work together for good, not for evil, but all things work together for good, for those who are called and according to his purpose. The Lord has a purpose for your life. It doesn't matter what you are going through. But the Lord is saying, it is just for us some time. And then I'm coming back to settle you down. And what you have gone through should be a thing of the past. And maybe you are here this morning. You are saying, Lord, unless you remember me, I cannot move an inch. The Lord is saying, I am here to strengthen you because you are work in progress and I'm not through with you because the Lord is so much concerned about your tomorrow than your today. And tomorrow is built by today. Therefore, if you have come, overcome today, believe you me, tomorrow will be brighter. Don't give up. Keep holding on because the one who called you knew that you cannot make it alone. And he said, I am with you to the end of the age. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, what an assurance that you are beside us. We are walking this journey with you, King of all the glory. We want to commit our lives to you, to your Father. We know you desire praise. As much as you desire prayer, above Father, you desire praise. Because when you praise you, dear Father, we lift you up, Jehovah, above all other gods. And this is my prayer to your Father for my loved ones. Jehovah Father, we need you today more than yesterday. We want to hear your voice to your Father. We want to hear, you, to, hear, to hear your embrace because you know where we are to your Father. Unless you come, King of all the glory, we cannot make it. Surrender your children to you. Come up, Father. Speak that word in that soft, small voice. May they know it is you who is encouraging them. And we will Jehovah Father to give you praise and to pray according to your will. So that you can give us a song at midnight to carry us through as we we wait to see the break of the day. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.